Good morning. It's um, just before seven on Thursday, 22nd of October. I can't believe that we're in week four of, um, of October. I'm trying to keep the camera away. I'm trying to keep the bite on my face so much. Um, well, that has gone so quick, those uh, three weeks. We've got one week left, obviously. Um, but I got up this morning and I cannot believe how dark it is. Now, I'm going to try and turn the camera around and show you how dark it is. It's like um, the middle, middle of the night. I don't know if this is even going to show up on the camera. Um, yeah, temperature's dropped and it is spitting, spitting out there um, and the wind, the wind's up so real like October day. I think I've just realised um, that our, in the UK our clocks go back in the winter so I think it's this Saturday that um, they go back which means we get an extra hour in bed. So in theory, it should be lighter, a bit lighter, for a bit longer. Um, lighter, I can't remember. Lighter. Um, I think they brought this in to force in the, I think it was in the Second World War for the um, farmers to get their, um, to get their crops in early. And in the spring, sort of the end of March, they go forward so we get we gain an hour and I quite like um, this little tradition that we have yeah spring spring and winter or spring and autumn rather I should say and fall for any viewers that are um, you know from over overseas um, today is granny baby day so the little bunnies come in I'm just gonna go make myself a cup of tea um, even the dogs are slow <laughs> this morning um, yeah, I'm going to go and watch a couple of um, podcasts. I can get those in with when I watch my um, morning morning cup of tea. So I've really been enjoying um, Susan at Green Lambkin. Um, she's been lovely. So I've ordered some yarn from her. So I'm excited about that um, coming. And then um, the lovely Sharon. I've been watching her um, from SCR1 TNO. SCR1 TNO. Hopefully you can understand me, and I'm not slurring words too much. I've just um, I tried to sort my mouth out this morning; it's still really painful. Um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to say good morning, and uh, to show you how dark it is outside. So I'll speak to you later. Hope, well, hopefully.
morning. I thought I'd just come on and um, say good morning to you. I am um, 23rd, Friday the 23rd of October. I'm just pinning out my wreath. I've been working on that this week. Um, because I'll have my morning cup of tea and just to see how far I'm along. I don't think I'm that far from finishing. I can measure it. And this is to go with this. Um, thinking about this this morning, I know I'm sort of late in starting this, but my idea is that I start it. Um, I'm going to work on it till is it next Saturday is the 31st and then I can have it up in November um, so I'll enjoy that for the month and then I'll put it away and then come next year it should be easier but I've already started um, it's quite monotonous really just doing this little bit but yeah, come next year, I'll have already started and then I can add um, a few more bits. I've made my pumpkin, I've just turned it inside out. So that part, that part is complete. Um, I've just got to stuff it and make a little leaf and obviously pull these pieces up. So going to yeah, have a go with this, see how far I am. I say monotonous, it isn't really, it's just the fact that um, it's something that always takes longer than what you think, but it's been quite nice just sitting and doing some um, stock, stocking stitch, stocking it, while I've been watching, you know, watching the um, Vlogtobers, and it has been really nice just watching everybody. So I've got to, I'm just doing this roughly. Oh, yeah. Try to make it as smooth as I can. So I've got a, a wrinkly wreath. I've never made one of these before. I'm just trying to look at the pattern to see if that's, if that's a bit wrinkly as well. I think that's the case that they have a few wrinkles in them. So the outside is quite easy to put on, it's just the, just the inside. Just put in this one. Right, if anybody has any suggestions, just let me know. Because I don't know. Okay. Pin it roughly, and then obviously, when I come to sew it up, I'll it move again slightly. Oh, I just need to watch my um, beautiful progress marker. Hmm. 
can see him from um, Stitch Create Love. So I've got my um, bits box out, so I can move you up. So I was just having a look and I think I'd like to have a go at definitely making the sunflower. Um, maybe the hedgehog and the little mass and perhaps some leaves. It's making sure that I've got the right colours. I was hoping that I've got the yellow, but that's too much of a um, like a, um, a baby yellow rather than a sunshine yellow. I was just having having a look, so I think that colour. Um, these are this is my Starcraft box, so I think that's parchment, Starcraft parchment. So that will probably be okay. Um, this one maybe for some um, berries and also maybe the mouse that would that could do for the mouse um, and if I wanted to do the toadstool I've got some I've got some red I don't really want to buy anything else is that maybe that's still really light isn't it now let's see what kind of yeah, that's a bit light for a sunflower um, Oh, a mustard sunflower. Mm. What other colours am I looking for? That's a green. I could use that for the leaves. I'd put that to one side. And fluorescent. Oh, that might be a nice um, berry colour. Do you have a box of um, bits and pieces? <laughs> leaf that could do for a leaf that's all the chocolate that I have so I might have to go upstairs I've got a couple of um, style craft blanket packs maybe I might have to borrow um, a ball out of, out of there let's see what I've got oh there's another piece of chocolate there so not going to be enough to do a sunflower. Um, oh, mm, I suppose that could be a mousy colour. Oh, I'll need some white for the toadstool. I'm going to do the toadstool. And I think that's that's it. Oh, I'll show you this. This is what I think. Yes, it is. This is um, a, like a pom-pom maker, but it's one that you can make a lot of pom-poms as you go. I bought this at the Knitting Stitch Show probably in about 2000, 2016, I think. And it was one of those things, you know, when you've been to these shows and you still have, some, well, <laughs> you still have some money left. This is, um, we sort of thought this... As I, that was our last purchase. Store was amazing. All the different things that they had made out of pom poms. So this is kind of how how you make your pom poms, and you can have like different widths of pom poms, and then you can just um, cut them, and so you have like a few pom poms at a time. Um, so you can trim. Yeah, trim the pom poms. I think I'd have no pom pom left if I tried to do that. But um, yeah, they've got pom poms on bunting, on cushions. Look at that, that's just lovely. I love, love that. Um, so, yes, yeah, have a look um, at them. Oh, was that little bag? Oh, it came, came in. Right, I'll carry on with this.
Hello. Got dressed. <laughs> um, it is Saturday the is it 25th? No, it's not 25th, is it? 29th? It's 24th. 24th of um, November. So I'm in uh, my daughter's wardrobe, my yarn um, stash. So I'm on the lookout for some Starcraft um, brown and gold to do the sunflowers. Um, so I was just wondering if I've got anything perhaps that I could borrow. I'll look at my Starcraft box first of all and um, let's see what I've got. colours in there. Okay, that's, that's a no. Um, but I knew that I've got a couple of um, bags. I bought um, some blankets where we um, sort of go and buy a commercial yarn. yarn. Um, it's a shop called Black Sheep Walls and they are amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, they have these um, days where they put on um, for people to come and go to the shop so they have Lucy from Attic 24 uh, maybe a couple of times a year um, which that's really lovely to go and meet her and um, you know see all the lovely things that she has produced and I should buy like a blanket pack so I'm just seeing if I've got anything in um, Starcraft that, uh, yeah which is all Starcraft so I'm just wondering if I've got something that I can borrow so this this is um, all the colourway for the cupcake um, blanket. Uh -huh. Right, okay, so it has got a brown. So that's the wa walnut. So that will do for the centre. And then I can just make a list and next time I go to Black Sheep Walls I can just replace that. It has got a yellow, but I don't think it's a golden yellow. What's this one? Oh, that's lemon. And I think that is... Is that going to show? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show that's looking quite white. Yeah. That is, yeah, trust me, that is, that's lemon, but that's not going to be uh, good enough. Right. So that's that one, so that's very good. I don't know, you know, now that I've seen it, I might just keep it out and have a look. Mm, it is very yellow. I want more of a goldy, a goldy yellow. So let's just see what I've got. Yellow's not something I keep really. And this one is the Moorland. I think this will be quite muted, muted colours. Beautiful, look, beautiful, beautiful colours. Absolutely. Beautiful. Look at those dogs. That's my husband's gone out. Of. I don't know what, what they're barking at. We, um, we had a squirrel um, last week, Wednesday I think it was. My husband noticed it on you know, the CCTV camera. And um, it came across, and then was on the front bed, and the, oh, the boys were going mad. Um, but they were really funny when they were outside. I wish I'd have my camera to film them because two of them were like stuck together like glue, but their noses were like this, and they were on the grass on the lawn outside, and they were like, yeah, yeah, like this. <laughs> so it was quite comical to watch. Right, okay, so that's the. Oh. Oh. I had a big suit at the end of last year and I just put them into plastic boxes to once that I could see them and just to try and have more of an idea of what I had because well I had more um yeah than what I thought I had at first when I really got back into my knitting uh sort of last three years I've just I have I've actually bought absolutely loads and loads and some has been I have got some bargains and some is just um 
I didn't need to, didn't need to buy it. I was just sort of carried away. There's two blanket packs I shouldn't have bought because I wasn't going to start them. But yeah, it's all there and I can do that. I'll just look at this. Nope. Oh my word. <laughs> Oh, this is something else I've started and I w really want to finish this um, and this is um, Jenny Crow the lanterns so I've managed to do two rows and I've sewn all the ends in and it's beautiful absolutely beautiful so I really would like to yeah finish that so I was thinking about this the other day and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put like a couple of blankets on my list that I would like to get finished next year so it would definitely be be this um, and maybe I'll have like um, a set day a week or something I've been watching um, Sharon from oh is it SCR1TNO and she has like a set day when she when um, she's working on like Christmas projects and I thought perhaps that was a good idea um, so maybe I would do that or maybe I'll just do like perhaps the first week of the month or something We'll see. So this is what happens. Kids move out and then you start um, filling fill the space. Mr. Cool Lanterns, that's what I call it. And it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And this yarn shop that I, sorry, I pointed something there. And this yarn shop I was um, talking to you about, um, they do, or you, before COVID, they were doing most wonderful like workshops and I was very lucky to be able to get onto the Janie Crow workshop. They had her, um, I think we were a little bit late and my daughter and I, we got to sit next to the teacher. You know when you go into a room and you, or you go into something and the only space is out the front, you, you know, you're late so you've got to go all the way down. But yeah, that was great. And, oh my, she is such a generous, generous teacher, such a generous teacher. So if you ever get the opportunity to um, work with her or be part of her class, go and do that. That's really good. Oh, that's a bit warmer. I'll take these out and see what you think. That is probably the colour for the sunflower. And I can just order, I can just buy another ball. Um, and replace that. They also... So would you, would you, would you regard that as, yeah, that's a whip, isn't it? It is a whip because it's in progress, but it's a long-term, a long-term um, whip. Yeah, a long-term whip. And then I have this. I don't know if you've ever heard. Oh no, that's that's the same. So. so it's another Jenny Crow pattern, but Lucia, Lucia fig tree. She is an Italian lady, but lives in Scotland with a Glaswegian accent. So she has turned. Yeah, so she has turned this pattern. So that pattern there, the Persian tiles, that's quite a famous um, pattern of Jenny Crow's. And she's put it in colour. Oh, and she's put it in colour. And that, that looks stunning, made up. And another thing I like about, about Black Street Walls is they changed their displays quite a lot and it's very tactile or was a very tactile shop before um, covid so yeah that's worth visiting so i've opened that as well and i think we started that i think january new year's day january 2019 i've not touched it but i found what i wanted so, so that's good so i do apologize um like if you're having trouble hearing me, um, my mouth is, say, really, really sore. I've got what's called um, a canker ulcer. Um, and I know why. It's because I've been quite stressed um, the last sort of three or four weeks. But that's all coming to, well, it's all getting sorted. Um, so, yes. I'm sorry if... Um, you can't hear me very well, but my mouth is, as I say, really sore. I have um, what's called a canker ulcer, which is extremely painful. And um, 
and it means my tongue is very swollen and I'm also conscious that I'm slurring and stuttering so I spoke to my mum on the phone yesterday and I said to her, I don't think I've been drinking I said I'm not <laughs> she, she was laughing she could tell um, and the reason I have one of these is I get them if I'm very stressed or run down in the last sort of three or four weeks I have um, so I'm just taking some taking some time out and I hope you just bear with me I know my video that's just gone up a couple of people said they couldn't hear me so this one I'll try and turn the volume well try and turn the volume up yeah if I if I can um, but if you don't hear very much of me it'd be because it's this side it's this side um you'll see me try to um loosen my mouth to talk <laughs> right so i'm gonna go and uh, sit i probably won't won't um look at this till tomorrow but at least i've got everything and it's ready I'm all, all prepared morning it's um sunday the 25th of october i think what what um month it was then <laughs> um, i'm just prepping for our dessert for tonight we decided that as we're going to be healthy eating on a sunday we are going to have a dessert which is something we didn't always have but we would have it in the week um you know if i perhaps popped out somewhere so i'm just trying to use things up as well so Last week I used um, these little trifle sponges. Um, so I'm just going to make some, it's nothing very exciting. <laughs> it's just like individual trifles. So I'm hoping that that kind of keeps portion control. And if my husband can have, say, one tonight and one tomorrow, he'll feel like he's had more of a, more of a dessert. He has much more of a sweet tooth than I do and um, I'm going to put we've got it's a cherry jelly and I'm going to put um, these cherries in as well I'm a bit late um, starting this I should have made the jelly yesterday but I'll have a go and um, you know just add it bit by bit I think with it being separate it will hopefully be quicker um, so I thought I'd just come on and tell you that so we're going to have have the jelly I've got the sponges, I've got the cherries, I'm going to make a custard with semi-skimmed milk, so I've um, saved a few calories there, and then I've got some creme fraiche to go on the top instead of cream, so hopefully that's a few more calories that we've saved and cut down on the fat as well. Um, so, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Rip it out. So that's an eye of partridge heel. Um, I think probably so named because it does look like an eye. So I'm back, <laughs> and I'm surprised how quickly the jelly here set. So I'm just going to put some cherries on top. These just look absolutely delicious. Even Right. 
We sometimes watch a program called the Barefoot Contessa, which is based in um, California. And she's just got a lovely um, aesthetic. Her voice is lovely. Um, and she's always in the kitchen cooking for Jeffrey. And um, my husband says he would, he would like to be Jeffrey and have all these lovely things cooked for him. Brunt. hard to do things when you're filming on camera and you can't quite actually see. The camera's obviously got to have the right angle. So that actually might be just enough. So I think I'll come back and um, just show you. I'll put the custard on top. Oh, those dogs, they've just been um, let out. There was a squirrel out there the other week, uh, the other day, so I think they're. Um, thinking that they're going to find the squirrel again. Well, I'll come back and see you later. Good morning. Um, it's Sunday 25th. Yeah, 25th. 25th of um, October. Well, I wanted to say January then. I don't know why. Um, I was going to bake a cake today, so I thought you might like to um, see what I'm doing. And it's a gluten-free um, cake didn't choose it um, for that in that re for that reason particularly but I think it's quite nice to have different um, things in your, in your in your diet or take different, different things out um, the reason I've chosen this I just did a, um, a search on good food and this is what it is um, it's a date banana and rum loaf um, I'll put the details below so if you'd like to have a look you can do that but the reason um, we're making this is when I made the um, tiramisu last week, I had could only use two of the egg yolks, so I had the two egg whites. So I put those in the freezer, and I got those out, defrosted those, and this was the recipe that came up. Um, and I don't know about you, but in the last sort of six, seven months since sort of COVID, we really have been talking a lot about food um, and also about what's in our food. We're, my husband and I are trying to. Be a bit more conscious about what's in our food so this is gluten yeah gluten free um the egg whites i suppose that's still dairy isn't it um but it's polenta yeah and it's using polenta um it cuts into 10 slices and it works out that it's 310 310 calories per slice if you do it into 10. um i don't think i'm going to get 10 slices out of it i think it realistically it's going to be eight but we were just looking so it's 310 calories fat is eight grams salt is one gram carbs is 57 grams um but the sugar is 49 grams so i suppose that's quite high and i think as i've been weighing out the ingredients it's because of the amount of fruit that's in here but i'm gonna have it um one thing i find with my husband for telling we're on a diet or we're cutting stuff down he tends to eat more so I'm better giving him something little and often and eating it out so if I make a cake at the weekend at least he's had a homemade cake and I think that's probably better than buying one um, even though this is you know <laughs> even though this is a lot more than what I was expecting but we're supposed to be going for a bite and ride so at least he'll have worked some calories off and he'll have this and we didn't have um, a cooked breakfast this morning we had boiled egg and soldiers which is lovely so I'm going to put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing um, and I hope you enjoy it.
Who would have thought I'd do this? Uh, two weeks ago, I'm out riding my bike. Oh, I'm still getting very fast, but I'm out I'm riding it and um, filming myself as uh, evidence. morning welcome it's the it's monday 26th of october it's very well very dark very wet here um in the northwest of england i hope you had a good weekend what did you do with um, that extra hour for our overseas viewers we in England or the United Kingdom we turn the clocks back in the winter at the end of October so you gain an extra hour in bed and in the spring they go forward um, so which I think we gain an extra we lose an hour but we gain an extra hours um, daylight I think it's um, a tradition I think that started at the end of or during the Second World War, I think, for, to allow big farmers to get the crops in. And it's something I absolutely love. Um, there's always a great discussion in our family as to, um, are they going forward, are they going back? <laughs> what, Saturday, it's normally, it's supposed to be officially two o'clock on a Sunday morning, but we always tend to put them back or forward before we, before we go to bed. 
So yesterday we, I've got a great big clock in my kitchen and um, my husband hadn't put it forward. Back, sorry, back. <laughs> hadn't put it back until um, about lunchtime. So all morning I kept looking at my clock and then having to look at my phone to check the time and thinking, oh, yeah, what's the time, what's the time? But we had um, a lovely time. Saturday, we had a really slow day. It was raining here, it was awful. So I spent quite a time, quite a bit of time just um, knitting. It was knitting um, Saturday. And then yesterday, it was just a different day. The difference in the weather was unbelievable. So we managed a bike ride. Um, I did a bit of baking and some more sewing, uh, knitting, which was really nice. Um, so I've just come down this morning, and it's about quarter to seven in the morning, and I thought I would just start on um, putting together um, a sunflower for my wreath. So I've made the mushroom, not the mushroom, the pumpkin, you can tell it's early in the morning, I've made, <laughs> I've made the pumpkin, I've made the hedgehog, and I'm working on the two sunflowers, because that, I must admit, is what drew me. Um, to um, to this project, and I think I I think I shared with you that I felt quite intimidated when I saw this. It's about three years old, this pattern, and it's just been on my sort of back of my head a list of what what I would like to do. And I was thinking about it last week and just started. You know, I'm just going to get it out. I'm just going to do do it uh, each day this week. I'm going to knit something new, and I'll put put this on. So I'm just busy, um, as I say, putting this together. So I'll stuff, stuff this. And this was dead easy. And this is, this is what I thought was going to be really difficult. But I think probably three years ago I wasn't so good at um, reading, reading my knitting. And I don't think I'd even read the pattern. And all this is... Um, is Mustitch, yeah. There. So I was rooting through my box, and I didn't seem to have the right golden yellow. Um, I went up into my um, stash and I had a look, and I don't think this was particularly picking up the colour on the light. But that's lemon, so that's that's not good. And then I borrowed this out of um, a kit, and that's more, I would say, an egg yolk yellow. Um, I haven't got the ball bag with me, so those of you who are StarCraft specials, you can let me know <laughs> what that is. And then out of a box of just bits and pieces that I had, I found like the perfect yellow. So I call some. Uh, See that out? What is that with the light? Um, sunflower yellow. So I'm just going to um, sew that on. And I'll do that. And this is one, as they say, in the good uh, Blue Peter style. That's one I made earlier. <laughs> so that will go on my, um, on my wreath.
Maxi. Good morning. It's about half past seven on Tuesday, the 27th of October. I'm suddenly wanting to say March. I don't know where this is coming from. I'm so sorry that I didn't seem to come on very much yesterday. I think I was just engrossed um, in jobs and the day just ran away with me. Um, it was very wet and very rainy outside, so I think I sort of just hunkered down really and um, got on with some jobs that needed doing. We were lucky enough to go out for a walk, um, which was amazing for us to go out. Normally we would have just stayed in. We got about halfway around our circuits, our walk that takes did take us an hour and ten minutes the first couple of times we we, um, we went on it. Um, and we got halfway round. And the heavens opened and it started to rain. Lucky enough, I had my coat, but I also had my hat on. My poor husband just had his coat on. And after a bit of coaxing, he took my hat, which is like my uh, mauve one, but put that on. Just to try and keep his ha head um, warm rather than dry. It wasn't too bad. Um, I think we walked for about five minutes in that and then fortunately enough it stopped. But we got back and it took us an hour. So I don't know whether we're getting fitter or... <gasps> We were just faster because of the rain. So I thought I'd come on this morning. I've got some jobs to do um, this morning. It's bed day today on Tuesday. I seem to always say that and then moan about the hoover. But I'm going to try not to say that today. Um, so, yes, I thought I'd come on, say hi, um, tell you a little bit about my day. And I will, I promise, um, come on and speak to you. My hair's a mess because I'm going to the hairdressers this afternoon. So I'm not washing my hair. Um, and I'm in tier three, so I'm not allowed to see anybody, but I'm allowed to go to my hairdressers to have my hair done, um, as long as I follow all the guidelines. And as my daughter is my hairdresser, it means that I get to see her. So I'm going for a wash and blow dry. So I would have seen her, was it last week? Or the week before, to have my hair, hair cut. Um, so I'm going for a treat today to see my daughter as well as a wash and blow dry and hopefully she'll it'll be curly and it might keep in for a bit for tomorrow for um our wedding anniversary so working on my wreath and i'm so pleased with it um let's see if i can show you I decided I was going to spend some time this week, some of my crafting time, and I was going to put this together. I've just decided, and I've pinned everything because I thought I'm not sure exactly where, how much I'm going to get done. I'm going to work on it till Saturday, and then after Saturday, that's it. I'm going to put it up for a month in November and enjoy it, and then I'll put it away. And anything I haven't finished or I want to add something to, I, I will be able to do that. But this is how far I've got. Now these sunflowers really intimidated me. And all this is, is um, for those of you that are beady-eyed or more experienced than me, you can see it's just a moss stitch and it's so effective. So you make these and then you make the sunflower um, petals. And I've made the leaves. I didn't have very much green in my um, scrap box. And this is literally just out of my scrap box. So it's whatever I've got. So I've, I've made these two different leaves. But I mean, there's all different kinds of leaves, isn't there, in, in nature. And then I've made the pumpkin, which I've really enjoyed seeing all the pumpkins. I've made the little hedgehog, and again, this is moss stitch. And then um, last, not, like, last night I just sat and um, made the little toadstools and the mushroom. And these really remind me of all the um, Eli Blyton books that I used to read as a girl and you would always see those like on the front covers or inside in the drawings so that's how far I've got with that and then today's job um, is I'm going to make a little mouse so this one here so I'm going to have a go at this 
so we'll see how cute he is um, yeah so we'll sit here for a little while and then um, have a breakfast maybe or have a morning cup of tea and then I'll probably well I will definitely get going because I certainly won't want to, want, want to make um, the bed and sort that out when I come back so hopefully I'll see you later Good morning. It's a bit sooner um, speaking to you today than what I thought it was going to be. Um, it's still raining outside. Um, I've come into town and I'm going to have my hair, I'm going to have a wash and blow dry. Um, it's my anniversary, wedding anniversary tomorrow, so I'm going to wash and blow dry and hopefully tight curls. Um, in the northwest, we're in tier three. So I'm not allowed to see my daughter socially, but I'm allowed to go to the hairdressers. Um, so that's the reason that I'm here, or the reasons that I'm here. Um, good job I just texted her before, about an hour ago, to confirm my appointment for this afternoon. She very kindly told me that it was uh, half past 11 this morning. So I'm here and I'm gonna get ready just to go in and see her. Um, I'm very lucky where she is. It's, it's a very small salon, but she's working Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and she's the only one in, so it's bliss. So I do feel quite safe. Um, and she said her Sunday um, bookings um, go like hotcakes. So she's doing really well, being uh, self self employed. Um, and Monday, yeah, Mondays and Tuesdays are busy. It's Friday. She just works on Friday, and I think she had two appointments last week, and then she had somebody phoned and she got a third appointment so yeah she was uh, really really good so I think hairdressers historically are normally closed like on a Monday and a, a Sunday and a Monday so this is working out well for her so hopefully next time you'll see me I'll have um, curls in my hair this is yeah, well I've got my hat on oh and I should talk to you about my hat um, my hat is Starcraft and I think it's Starcraft Life. I do think I've got a big head, you know. <laughs> Starcraft Life. Um, my daughter knitted this for me um, a couple of Christmases ago, and I've got a pair of um, fingerless mitts to go with it. Um, and she bought the wool and the pattern when we were at um, the Knit and Stitch show, and that's a couple of years ago. That was yeah, 2018. I think was the last time we went. Could go last year because she was um, 
Was she heavily pregnant? Oh no, I think she just had, I think she just had um, the youngest, her first son, her first child. Um, so we couldn't go. And then this year was his birthday, so we couldn't really go. So maybe 2021 or realistic fully. Hello, I'm all curly now. So hopefully this will um, last till tomorrow. Uh, my daughter told me to um, sleep with my knickers on my head. So it's attractive, won't it, to wake up tomorrow? <laughs> oh, it's just so nice to have your hair done. Yeah, it's so nice just to have your hair done at this book of treat, um, just going for a, a wash and a blow dry. So uh, that was nice. It was just us two. So that was even better. Um, so we're on the way to Tesco's now. I've not been there for ages. So um, I'm going to see if I can find myself a nice pair of pyjamas. Okay, speak to you later. Bye. Hello. Just thought I'd share. Um, the beautiful flowers that have been uh, dropped off. Socially distanced, of course, from my beautiful girls. Um, a wedding anniversary tomorrow. So they've um, put these together for us. So they're absolutely beautiful. These ones especially are really autumnal. And they remind me of the flowers I had in my wedding bouquet. Um, sort of this colour and this colour especially. And... The night before, we had a very, very small wedding. Um, we had the reception hours, went to the local town hall, got married and then came came back. Um, and the night before, my um, nana came from Suffolk and she was busy um, making my wedding bouquet and all the buttonholes and um, the flowers for the house. She used to do um, the arrangements for church. So that's just like a really nice memory to uh, think of today. <laughs> you like? Hi. Um, I'll just introduce you to Max. This is um, Bronte's mate. And this is where all the trouble started. Wasn't it? Okay. And he's known as Max, Maximilian, Maxi. Dirty Max, <laughs> you were the one, weren't you? That got my beautiful Bronte into trouble. Yes, he was. But he has such a cheeky face. It's just, <laughs> you were lovely. Um, I did all the things that you shouldn't have done. I um, found him on the internet. He was the first Jack Russell I saw. So I got Bronte and then my husband was all over and I was like, She's going to be my last puppy, so I was jealous. I thought, right, I'll put you back and I'll get you your own. And then you can leave my puppy alone. So I got him on the internet, didn't tell my husband, went and got him. Um, so you're at Northern Dog, aren't you? <laughs> um, and when I got there, the mum wasn't there, the dad wasn't there. He was the only one that was left, weren't you? Nobody wanted you. <laughs> Can't believe that nobody wanted him. You were just so lovely. Um, so I said to the woman, yes, I wanted him, and um, I think she was quite desperate for me to take him. So I gave her the money and she gave me £20 back, <laughs> so I sure that I took him. Um, we always planned to have a litter, um, but it was a bit quicker than what we'd expected. Being a townie, I just thought I could put a stair gate up between him and Bronte when she came into season. But old boy, you were there, weren't you? You were there. Did the deed. Yes, I think my husband and the vet thought I was absolutely cracked uh, when we took her to get, you know, I just, he was only about eight, nine months, so I just thought that he, he couldn't father any puppies, and if he did, what would they be like? And I kept asking the vet lots of questions. When we got outside, my husband said to me, he said, um, stop asking him questions. Every time you ask him a question, he said, it's costing me more money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you did the deed, didn't you? And a few weeks later, we had five boys, five boys, not a girl in sight. So both my daughters, they took one each. So one's got the black and white, the only smooth one that is that was in the litter. Um, and he was, we nicknamed him Buster because he was the biggest. Um, and my daughters just kept that Buster. And he's got he's got a long tail, which she calls the whip. Bronte, um, her tail was docked just after she was born because uh, she was born on a farm. They intended to keep her 
So she's got a duck tail. She's the only dog I've had. Yes. Um, and then my other daughter took one of one of the um, they're called like rough cups. Um, so she's got brown and cream, and we called him Baggy because he was he just he seemed to have to grow into his skin. And unbeknownst to us, our son-in-law um, was kind of the same when he was born. He was like, had lots of loose skin. So they just kept him, I called him Bags. Can I say hello? But yeah, you've got a bit of a, you've got a bit, little bit. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Have you had enough? Yeah, that's it. That's all, that's all he's, all he's going to say. It's because look, I've just, um, I've just brushed him and Bronte has found um, a toy that I've bought and I put it in the cupboard but I've forgotten. So they're all after it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to introduce you to Max. Um, I want to see what he's like. But he's great. He's such a character. Um, he can growl at you, um, but it isn't very, isn't very often. When we first had him, I think he got he got a bit lost because we had Bronte moved here, and then we had Max, and I was had to stay in the house quite for quite a long time because we had a lot of workmen here. So it's difficult to get out on the road and yeah, go and do the necessary training you have to do. And then we, all of a sudden we had the boys, but it was his fault. Um, and so then we had that. I'd never reared puppies, um, but we did yeah, rear them all, all successfully. And it's quite funny that we have all of them. Um, and when they all get together, it can um, be noisy. <laughs> very, very noisy. But uh, yeah, no, adore them. You can just hear Bronte's growling in the basket because she's got this squeaky thing on. So that'll be it for the afternoon. Give myself the afternoon off. Um, so I think I'm going to go in and do, do a bit of sewing. And I'm working on this wreath. Um, I think I've got another mouse that I'd like to do if I can get that done today. That would be good. And I'll speak to you later. All right. Bye. Good morning my lovelies. It's Wednesday, October the 28th. Um, we have two little mouses in our house. They're going to go on my wreath and I'm so happy with them. They're so cute. Let me just see if I can show you a bit more. Yeah, I've got two little tails. I'm not very good at um, doing faces but I don't think these look too bad. I don't think they look like gangster mouses. I think they're quite cute and I'm so happy that they're going to go on my wreath. I'll just show you. So I'm going to put those on. So it's beautiful here today. We've had a couple of days where it's been really wet, really rainy. Um, it's also our wedding anniversary today so we're well, I was going to say we're on our own, we're always on our, on our own, us too, um, but extra special. We've booked a table out for lunch today, so we were really looking forward to it after all this um, healthy eating. And we are just going to have whatever I, whatever we want. Um, I think we've got a trip to a bookshop as well um, to pick some books up, so that'll be bliss. I've got a new dress today, um, so that will be lovely. And I've gone down a size, so let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope I can fit into it. If not, I'll wear something else and I'll put, keep that up. Um, I just wanted to see if I could, yeah, go down a size. We'll see. Um, so I will say bye for now and come back later. Hopefully I will get some footage that I can put on. Um, and then that will be it today. That will be week four. It's absolutely flown. I hope that you've enjoyed the vlogs. I hope that with me having an ulcer for the last week hasn't been too painful for you to watch or listen to. Um, I did get the 
editing done on my last vlog and we redid the sound. There was evidently a problem with my phone um, and it wasn't, it wasn't me. I hadn't touched anything, so we've sorted that out. So hopefully this will all um, edit up lovely and it will be a pleasure for your ears, shall we say. <laughs> um, all right, my lovelies, I'll speak to you later. Just wanted to come on and show you, or share with you rather, um, how beautiful my poncettia is from last year. I'm not very good at um, keeping plants. I kind of forget to water them. I don't really know how to care for them. And it is something I would like because it does give me joy. Um, all the red leaves have fallen off. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any more red leaves, but it's really, really healthy. Um, I just think it likes this spot, this windsill. Um, and I've got a little geranium, which is still flowering. And that has given me so much joy to see. I normally like the red geraniums, but the colour on this that's sort of like a corally pink, it's just beautiful. And that looks really healthy. So perhaps this is a good windowsill for um, plants. And I just wanted to share that with you today. Thank you.